Crystal here, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. It has been, I would say, around a couple months. I would say same as uh, Sakura Spirit, in terms of the last time I recorded. So, uh, yeah. I also had to replay the game, um, because when I had to reinstall Windows 8 on my computer, well, yeah, I lost the save. But everything's okay now. Now, without further ado, let's get back into this. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match her as we walk, we slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than yeah, rather than either wing. Ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. Oh, my eye itches, why? It easily dwarfs my old school's library with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world e or old world air. Sorry, I'm fucking losing my mind already. Need more coffee. Mm. Oh. Ah. There don't seem to be a lot of students here, considering the time. It isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. Yuko, are you there? Or are you here? Sorry. I can't read, apparently. She says it's just in air, since the librarian doesn't seem to be present. And of course, Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against him, followed by a quiet wail. Aww. <laughs> the origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Hi Lily, how can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped, and when I was looking for both for both of them, you came in and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry. I couldn't know. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression. And then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look. She seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, Lily, did you get my message? Message, hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right, right, they finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but I missed your celebration. Celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure. She notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on spot when she does. Oh no, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me, Yuko. This is Hiso. A new student. Hiso, this is Yuko. The school librarian. Pleased to meet you. Hiso, hi. Hiso, pleased to meet you too, Hiso. I think that's how you say it. I, I don't know yet. Maybe I should look it up. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisa a little something about the library? 
Lily's innocent suggestion is another expression of abject terror. I, please Lily, I can't, I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How oh, it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. Her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me with the, where the light novels are. But... So there are a lot of books in Braille here? I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops in my head. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. Well, I think about a third or fourth of Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that would be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. I spend more on new books than on my salary. And then I have to organize and shelf them all. Or all of them. It's so troublesome they weigh so much, I wish I could quit this job. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Um, I'll go check the aisles then if you don't mind probably for the best, or it's probably the best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well, meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. My first impression was right, the library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I study the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. Man, I want to do that so bad. I fucking love books. Oh, this is making me miss those old days where I'd read a shit ton. Oh shit, I missed that. Eh, eh. I already read that, never mind. It's okay. I, I, I'm not fucked up. I'm not fucked up, or I haven't fucked up. One of those two. I mean, I am fucked up, but you know. Whew. I guess I'll never be stuck for... Or, yeah, stuck for choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are, lar there are large print and braille books scattered throughout. But it is what a li it is, a library. It's as if the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lily is in. With Lily in snuck with us in. That's a weird way to phrase that. I had tea with... <laughs> I'll try reading it. It's as if the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lily in snuck with us in here. Unless it was here to begin with. Okay, maybe it doesn't sound too bad. Maybe I'm just fucking dumb. Anyway. Something about that puts me at ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further, though, I discover a nice quiet corner at the back. While the last... The... The... the while the rest of the library has an odd, has the odd student sitting at a desk, either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of several beanbags. It's the dark-haired girl from my class, the one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. And the way she was acting today, I had her pegged for more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of whys in my head. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself, as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts looking scared, scaredily up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close, underneath her long, dense bangs. I can see that part of her face, at least a third if not half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scar subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second, I am shocked and divert my eyes back to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself, and I remember what I walked up to her for. Uh, that. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It, it's okay. 
The ghost certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So, um, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit. But finally, she nods just a little. Uh, okay. Take a seat next to her and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi, never heard of it. So, uh, sorry for, again for startling you, I'm Hisa. She looks up from her book, stalling a little bit before replying. I know. We are in the same, same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it's barely, barely audible even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. Uh, uh Hanako. I'm Hanako. I resist the urge to say that's a nice name, just to have something to say. But really, it's the only thing I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different than each other. And here I am, being all bothered and fussed over that kind of thing. Don't, le don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books, if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and the introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. A comfortable silence that consumes us. My eyes still wander to her direction, and I sneak peeks at her follow flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize that she's doing the same and only pretending to be immersed in Life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I... I... I? I? I've got to go do something. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she is nowhere to be seen. Uli and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanukkah myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did you see her uh, notice a girl run past her? Um, maybe? What did she look like? Long, dark hair, kind of shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. You'd be talking about Hanukkah, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to walk up to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear, Yuko. Would you excuse me? I better try and find her. Sh sure. I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right, um, I'll see you later then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing, I was just looking for some books and she got this bit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of is that I might have looked at her in her general direction a few times. Well, she is a very timid girl. You must be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think. And she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit strange? I wonder. It's just how she is, I think. Yuka doesn't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be here. How should I deal with these people forcing myself to act overly casually? Not o or only makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile, and she blushes heavily. What, what? Did that sound stupid? No, no. It sounded rather really wise. I think you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us have anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers on their desks really like doing that. Did you find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing. But I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. 
Oh. Yeah, I want some books. I left them over there because... Now I'll just go get them. I fetched my stack of books from inside the beanbag where Hanako and I were sitting and returned to the counter. Oh, you eat a lot, don't you? I surprise myself with that too, honestly. At least, when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill that time. I couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else and just checks out my books for me. I guess this is what they call tact. Holding the library books in one arm, I trail my pocket for the key to the door. A sudden sound from behind startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying, or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. Who is it? Fucking this nerd. Ah, <sighs> man. I turn around to see who is talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before. Yesterday. I don't think so. I remember someone who I only met, met only yesterday. When was that? What day is it today? I try to ignore him. Is he joking, or what? Proof that we've met before. You live across the hall, you're Kenji. Kenji jumps back. His eyes fill with an uncomprehending uncom fear. How'd you know my name? Damn, this can only mean one of two things. Either we have met, or you're telling me the- And you're telling me the truth. I just- And I just can't remember it. Or you're a spy. He pauses. A psychic spy. His eyes start around me, trying to peek into my room. Although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. And she points a finger at my face damningly. Unlike you. Stop that, man. We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies. If you think you can pass this, he's not because I'm legally blind. You're just solely mistaken. You don't even look like him. I mean, the semblance is real. Real slim. Maybe at distance. But who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. Exasperated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. Stay there. And she comes closer, one careful step at a time. I stay still, lest he assault me psychically. Physically, psychically. <laughs> Although I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh wait, I see now. Damn, it really is you. Sighing again, and then once again for good measure, I step backwards just in case. What's up, man? You don't look so too good, I think. Something wrong? I don't know, just had some st stupid happen to me. A few stupid things, actually. Even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on other people here. And I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any contact either. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you psychic spy and all. But you can never be too careful. It's the hard reality we live in. I'm slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. You see? That's how it is, this world. There's no justice, you see. Even when I lose, I win, because I don't lose the lesson. What does that even mean? It doesn't matter. He dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. So what happened? I have a long face. Do you have a long face? Eh, it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally, literally too. She actually ran away from me. It was my fault, really, I think. I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one? You? That's a hard question. She had a nice body and beautiful hair, but the face... I guess it could go either way. I'll say she's cute. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it. There are a lot of cute girls here. Strange to disproportionate amount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. I tried to warn you, men. But did you listen? I don't remember any such warnings. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets. Extremely dark. Like a black hole. Have you noticed that the number of girls in the school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60 to 40. He turns his head to the left and stares off in the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? 
I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad. But that's a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a man's dream, but no. What I'm about to tell you could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out. No. No, I am not ready. I only get as far as turning the door now before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground, a site of a feminist infiltration. This disparity in the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have come. In case this cold war turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the forces of the feminists. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. It's not 60 to 40 split. But it's only a matter of time, man. Even in America, women are the majority by hair. By a hair. They're building up. Their numbers in the past, the buildup of, mil of a military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of a political value. The perfect target. They are so cunning, as expected of women. Soon, the day will come when... Kenji's voice trails off ominously. That is why you can't trust them. They will string you along, and then kill you. Just as th they killed me, you will end up just like me. Ah, oh, hell no. I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So, oh, you're not supposed to say something like that. Damn, so rude. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Fast feminist conspiracy. Stop it. Stop. I lost you way, way back there somewhere. Somewhere around feminist infiltration. Too hard to follow? Eh, that's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? No puppets. You don't like puppets, okay. Graphs are still cool, though, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking, moving his hand in an animated way as he continues to rant on. This is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in the insane world. Genji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in the insane world. That is my dream, you can't just steal a man's dream. The hell? They can't be two last sane men. I didn't validate the whole last part. That part is too- is kind of important. There can only be one. Like that foreign movie where there can only be one. And in the end, there is only one dude left, because that was the point. I've never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. I also have a list of the other dark and complex conspiracies that the school holds, as tangled as... Quick. I just might you before me. Be a pal. I'm going to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy to them. Denial is a terrible thing. Later. What the fuck? <laughs> Kenji is so fucking weird. Oh my god. <sighs> well. Well, that was a good first episode to come back in. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Peace out, guys. Mm. Fucking coffee. Bye-bye.